You could use a couple of blocks if you have them handy. They would be really helpful. If you don't have blocks, even some sturdy books would work. I have a yoga bolster. Um, a sofa cushion works pretty well for this as well. A blanket or two is always great to have. And obviously a yoga mat. You don't want the yoga mat to be slippery. So um, if you're wearing socks and we ever do anything standing up, please take your socks off so you don't slip. Today's practice is focusing on the thyroid. It's something I'm very intimate with because I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune thyroid disease, about 14 years ago. And um, it's part of the reason I went on this healing journey that I went on. So Hashimoto's, um, it's a little different than either hypothyroid or hyperthyroid. In fact, it, it can include both. It's a dysregulated thyroid because your immune system is attacking the thyroid. And so um, there are a lot of things that I have done differently to support my thyroid, including many lifestyle changes, getting enough rest, eating really, really carefully, taking lots of supplements, and just recently, I have started on a bioidentical thyroid medicine. And those things have been guided by um, a physician that I really trust. But there are a lot of things that you can do for yourself. And yoga can play a really big part in keeping your thyroid healthy. So today's practice, we will focus on um, asanas that will help the thyroid. We'll focus on breath practices that help the thyroid. And we'll even do a mudra practice, which involves placing the hands in a particular position to draw the energy in for thyroid healing. So join me on the mat. I really look forward to this class. It means a lot to me, and I hope you find it helpful to you. All right, we are gonna start with any seated position, so you don't have to sit cross-legged. In fact, my legs are getting tired, so I'm just gonna change the position of my leg. But the most important thing is that your spine be straight and tall. So once you get comfortable in that position, for a moment, just go ahead and close your eyes if you feel safe to do so. Just notice your breathing and notice your state as you're starting today's class. The thyroid affects our metabolism. It affects our temperature regulation. It even affects our feelings of fatigue. And one of the things that has become very important to me is to not fatigue myself, to maintain my vital energy all the time. So just check in with your vital energy. Where is your energy today? If you need more energy, you're going to want to practice a little more enthusiastically. If you need more calming down, you want to practice a little more gently. So this is where you have to really listen to your body. <clears throat> So one of the breath practices that can be very activating for the thyroid, um, because sometimes our thyroid is really slow, is Kapalabhati breath practice, which is also known as shining skull. Now, if you have uncontrolled blood pressure issues or are pregnant, um, or the practice doesn't feel good, go back to a, a kind of a calmer breathing practice. It's a heat producing practice. And a lot of people with thyroid issues can't get warm. They're always cold. That happens to me all the time. My feet are cold. My hands are cold. So this is a heat producing practice from the middle of the body. So you're going to breathe in normally if you can through the nose. And on, on the exhale, I want you to pull the belly in pretty vigorously. So it's just going to be a passive inhale and then an active exhale. Pull the belly in. Pass Passive inhale, active exhale, pull the belly in. Passive inhale, active exhale. So just do this a few more times and then let's see how it feels.
Go back to a normal breath and just notice how you feel. You might have a little more heat <laughs> in your body. So when you're feeling cold, as long as this breath practice doesn't bother you, this can be a great breath practice. All right, now let's do some asana that is helpful for the thyroid. Again, we're going to want to extend this part of our body, but not really crunch the back of our neck. If, if you have real serious thyroid issues, be careful about going this direction. But this direction can be very good for the thyroid. So I'm going to place my blanket under my knees. and do some cat cows, but slightly different style than you might be used to. So first go ahead and stack the joints if you can. And then as you're inhaling, I want you to feel the engagement of the back body as you lengthen the front body. So your whole front body is lengthened, but you're feeling the engagement of the back body. Then come back to neutral, so release that. And then as you exhale, Feel the engagement of the front body. Maybe even draw the shoulders up. Come back to neutral. Do that a few more times slowly and then do it smoothly. Inhaling, engagement of back body, neutral. Exhaling, engagement of front body, neutral. And when you're in neutral, make sure you're letting go of tension. Do that a few more times, maybe smoothing it out, paying attention, particularly pay attention to your throat area where your thyroid is located. Some people say that the throat chakra, Vishuddhu, can control the thyroid, so it's really interesting to see how your health of your throat chakra is, which is part of your energetic or subtle body. And there are some really cool tests you can take online. Just search chakra balancing tests, and then you can check that out. All right, so now gently widen the knees, press back. And I like to put something under my tops of my feet when I do this. Go ahead and press back to a child's pose. So another interesting breath practice that can activate the throat chakra and the thyroid is actually humming. So while you're back here, breathing in through the nose, make a humming sound on the exhale. Mm. Once again, notice how you're feeling. How do you feel? All right. So go ahead, and I'm going to show you from the back. Tuck the toes in if you can. This could be a, causing a lot of sensation. So my toes are all tucked in. I'm going to sit back on toes, back on my toes, and activate the bottom of my feet. Your entire fascial tissue from the bottom of your feet connects all up your back body to here. And again, this whole area can affect your thyroid. So just take a couple of breaths here. And you might want to tap your toes out now. Ooh, might be a lot of sensation. So camel pose is a great pose for the thyroid, but a lot of people can have some problems with camel pose because if they're not careful, it can affect their low back. So I teach camel pose in maybe a slightly different way than you've seen before. Rather than leaning back and feeling pretty vulnerable, I want you to imagine your thighs are pressing against something, like a wall in front of you. And then place your hands on your low back and opening up the chest and opening up the throat and maybe tucking the toes in for balance, but don't lean back, press forward, press forward, breathing, breathing. Ah, how do you feel? 
So in between, just to move our body in some sort of organic fashion, go ahead and lift your arms up to the sky. Draw your hands to your lower back and tuck your chin in for a minute. Lift up to the sky on an inhale and draw it back again on an exhale. So let's come to seated and I'll introduce you to the thyroid supportive mudra. So whatever seated pose feels good for you. And this is the Garuda mudra, the eagle mudra. And it's known as balance. Your thyroid has a lot to do with balance. So you're going to make your hands look like eagle wings. And all you're going to do is um, you're going to actually face them towards you. So I wanted to show you what it looked like. So now face your hands towards you and just connect your thumbs together. And now you're looking just like you have eagle wings here. And then if you can, just place this near your chest. Close your eyes and I will do the Garuda Mudra for you. So Garuda is a mythical eagle and the Garuda Mudra directs your breath, your awareness and your energy to your upper chest and neck with a special focus on your throat. This helps your thyroid's functioning. The mudra enhances our awareness of the importance of balance in all of our activities that support the thyroid in functioning properly. <clears throat> and the guided meditation is called Wings of Balance. As you hold the Garuda Mudra, take several natural breaths to attune to all the feelings and the sensations awakened by the gesture. Notice how your breath is gently directed into your upper chest, your throat, and your neck, naturally releasing tension from these areas. As tension is released, you experience greater balance and harmony throughout your entire being. To deepen your sense of balance and harmony, we will explore some of your body's polarities naturally leading to an overall feeling of integration and unity. Begin by taking some time to sense your breath flowing through your left nostril and the left side of your body, experiencing the cooling and refreshing qualities that arise naturally. Now bring your awareness to the right nostril and the right side of your body experienced an enhanced sense of warming and energizing qualities. Next, allow your breath to flow through both nostrils and both sides of your body evenly, experiencing this integration of breath. Continue your journey by taking several breaths to bring awareness to the right hemisphere of your brain, your intuitive, receptive aspect of your being. Next, bring awareness to the left hemisphere of your brain, which is your dynamic, cognitive aspect of your being. Now allow your awareness to rest evenly in both hemispheres of the brain. Take several breaths here to experience integration and harmony. Continue your journey of balance and harmony by bringing breath and awareness to your thyroid gland at the center of your throat, the essential organ for regulating metabolism. The gland has two lobes shaped like wings, serving as a symbol for the balance of rest and activity that allows you to live with inner and outer harmony. Begin by bringing breath and awareness to your thyroid's left wing as a symbol for restoration and recovery, the time your body needs to completely heal. Next, bring breath and awareness to your thyroid's right wing, 
sense its symbolic meaning, providing abundant vitality and energy for all of your activities. Now bring your breath and awareness to both th sides of your thyroid evenly, sensing the perfect balance of rest and activity that support the health of your endocrine system, allowing your whole body to function optimally. As all of the polarities of your body are balanced naturally, sense your entire being resting in perfect harmony. Affirm your harmony as you repeat the following three times aloud or silently. With all of my polarities balanced naturally, I experience perfect harmony. With all of my polarities balanced naturally, I experience perfect harmony. With all of my polarities balanced naturally, I experience perfect harmony. Release the hand gesture, move your fingers around, take several natural breaths, maybe even shrugging the shoulders a little bit and shrugging them the other way, moving the arms around organically. Ah, and then let's make our way onto our bellies for doing a cobra series, which is very good for your thyroid. So once again, if you are sensitive to the feeling of the floor or you're on a very hard surface, you might want to spread a blanket out. And then lay down gently on your belly. Place your hands by the sides of your breasts. Allow your head to rest gently down. Lift it on an inhale, not using a lot of the hands. The hands are here to guide you. And then put a cheek down. Number two, inhaling. And let your other cheek go down. Inhaling and exhaling and inhaling and exhaling taking a rest make a pillow with your arms let your feet come up the bottom of your legs and just allow your legs to slide side to side windshiper windshield wiper fashion now, if you can reach behind, which is not accessible for everybody, and again, the energetics of what you're doing is more important than the actual doing. So if you can't reach, just get your leg up and just visualize that you are lengthening one side of the body as you are also stretching your quad and just feel that lovely feeling. Release that and then take the other leg and then lengthen the other side body. Be careful with your neck as you feel that quad stretch and let it go. Now, some of you might want to do a downward dog from here. If not, you can always do a puppy pose. Puppy pose looks just like a dog, except your head is on the ground, your knees are on the ground, your butt's in the air, you're still lengthening your back, or you could Go into a downward facing dog. Once again, keeping the knees bent, lengthening the spine. And then from here, let's all make our way down to our backs for a couple of beautiful restorative poses that are great for the thyroid. So for the first pose, you don't want anything under your head if possible. Your knees are bent, the feet are on the floor. Now I'm going to have to take out my transponder so I'm not laying on it. Okay, so adjust your wardrobe and just notice already how you feel. You could have your chin slightly up in the air, creating a little bit of curve under your neck and just feel that for a moment. 
And then if you have an Ujjayi breath practice, go ahead and start that. If not, I will explain what that is. Ujjayi breath is also known as ocean breath. You can strict the back of your throat, and some people place their tongue on the roof of their mouth, and you make a sound. It's more exaggerated on the exhale. This is a very regulating breath. It also um, is very calming to the nervous system, and a lot of thyroid issues can be solved by working with your nervous system. So if you want to add a bridge pose to this, Gentle moving bridge. Allow your arms to go completely out into a T-shape, palms facing the sky. Allow the knees to gently lower to the left as you look right. This is just a gentle twist, very neutralizing pose. You can even explore this pose by bringing your feet in slightly closer toward each other and see how that feels. or by taking your feet even slightly away from each other and the knees are sort of tucked in and that will get the front of your body a little bit more. Be careful that you don't tweak your knee. And now it's lovely to have legs up in the air, some sort of inversion for your thyroid. I don't do a shoulder stand. What I do is take a bolster and I place it under my back somewhere, <laughs> usually mostly on my rear, maybe a little bit in the back area, and then allow my legs to go up in the sky. And when you're doing this, this is a wonderful inversion, excellent for the thyroid, also great for a lot of other issues like restless leg and um, excessive fatigue. It's great for helping you sleep at night. So you might want to try the Ujjayi breath practice here or just a full yogic breath where you feel the belly, the lower ribs, and then the upper ribs. So go ahead and draw your knees in towards your chest. Place feet on the ground. Lift your hips up to slide anything out from underneath. And the last pose we'll do is a lovely restorative fish pose. Fish pose is very healing. And the restorative version is just wonderful as we're aging rather than doing the full fish which I think can be hard on a lot of people's necks. So what I'm going to do um, is probably place the bolster under my shoulders and then the blanket under my head. Now you could also use two blocks here. So it's, it's important that you modulate how far back your neck goes. Um, the, f the further back it goes, the more stimulating it is to the thyroid, but it can be a little tricky for the neck. So you have to really find that sweet spot here. So I am drawing the, the bolster underneath my shoulders to allow my arms to drape over them. And then I, again, my chin is slightly up, but because I have a blanket under my head, it's not too far back for me. So again, be very careful that you don't throw your head back too far that it's just the right amount. 
For your legs, you might want to do this restorative pose where your feet are wider than your knees and your knees are bent toward each other. Some people actually like this pose where their legs are sort of in a butterfly or cobbler's position, but you might need something under each thigh, but that can feel good for certain people. And then other people like to just lengthen their legs out. You get a little more opening in the front of the hips. So whichever one you choose to do, go ahead and take your right hand on your heart and your left hand on your belly and just slowly breathe and affirm your right to have a healthy thyroid. Affirm its ability to function optimally with just beautiful, positive, uplifting feelings, thoughts, affirmations, breathing. So this signals the end of today's class.